In this video, I'm going to share with you guys what to do when you first land in Japan. This video is brought to you by Mobile SIM Cards. More about mobile later on in this video. So most of you coming to Japan for the first time may be a little bit intimidated. You might be confused because it's a completely different language, a whole new country. So in this video, I wanted to kind of show you my tips and tricks about what you should do when you first come to Japan. And since I've been living in Japan for more than 15 years now, I kind of know my way around this airport. So I really want to share my tips and tricks. But before I start this, if you guys want to see what I'm doing on a daily basis or what I'm doing when I'm filming these videos, definitely check out my Instagram account. Oh, and if you like my Japan, hoodie I'll leave a link in the description all right so let's get started and what better way to start than at the airport travelers flying to Tokyo for the first time have an option to fly into Narita or Haneda airport I often get asked what's the difference between the two airports so let me clear things up for you Narita is the larger of the two airports and is generally known to have more international flights while Haneda has more domestic flights both have lots of dining and shopping areas but since Haneda is newly renovated I have to give Haneda the overall edge when it comes to attractions biggest differentiator between both airports is the distance to Tokyo Narita is about one hour away by express train while Haneda is about 15 to 30 minutes train ride away So it's a little cheaper transportation wise from Haneda So one of the first things that I recommend when coming to any country is to have some internet connectivity I know that there's Wi-Fi in like different spots But in Tokyo you're gonna be traveling to so many different places that I definitely recommend getting a sim card Fortunately in this video mobile has sponsored us and has given us a sim card to use What's nice about mobile is that they can send you the sim card to your home country free of shipping before you even get to Japan. So you're connected and you're all covered and there's nothing to worry about. But in case you didn't have time to get the SIM card in advance, they actually have places you can pick up at the airport or all throughout Tokyo and Japan. Mobile even offer English customer support. All right, so now that I have my SIM card, we can get into some business. What's really nice about the SIM card is that it's the same SIM card as my SoftBank, the one that I regularly use when I'm living in Japan. So I know that it's a, it has a coverage. In fact, SoftBank is covered 99% of all of Japan. So wherever you go and wherever I've been I've always had pretty good reception what's nice is that it's unlimited data plus it's 4g so it's super fast now that we're connected let me show you some favorite apps that you guys definitely need when you come to Japan um, it'll make your life so much easier one of the things that's really daunting for a lot of people first coming to Japan is the transit like the metro because of all the different transfers now what a lot of Japanese people use is they use a Jordan and Navi time but it's, since it's Japanese I don't actually recommend that you guys use it there are some English apps but in fact what I've found is that Google works pretty well it actually gives you pretty good directions if you don't have Google then I would just definitely download the Google Maps app you just search from like, where you are to your destination and you should be able to get like the train schedules based on that you might have some specific travel apps for your language but if you really want like something that's pretty up-to-date definitely just use Google Maps oh and another cool app is the Google translation app if you guys don't know this download the Google translate app and when you don't know the language or you don't know like the menus or anything you can put it up to the picture or the menu item that you're looking at and it'll translate on the fly it's actually pretty cool now if you're looking for what to eat and where to eat for sure check out my past YouTube videos as well as my Tokyo zebra.com website for more maps and guides but if you want local restaurant reviews don't bother with Yelp or TripAdvisor everyone in Japan uses the Tabero website for this although the site is primarily in Japanese it does offer an English interface with useful info about the restaurant and pictures of the food all easily accessible from your device at any time with your mobile sim also another local tip although the uber taxi app is popular in most parts of the world it's really not that popular in Japan one because it's run by a private company so the rates aren't any cheaper than normal taxis and sometimes even more expensive. Two, it's so easy to grab a taxi in Tokyo. No point in waiting to call a taxi when one's already there. Finally, if you plan on making some Japanese friends, everyone here uses Line Messenger. If you're looking to exchange contact details with someone, this is the way to go. Download it before you get to Japan and save yourself some time. So if you're feeling a little funky, there's actually several places you can take showers here in the airport. One is this capsule hotel. Even take naps there or stay overnight, which is fairly cheap. Narita has a shower spot called 9 Hours at Terminal 2. It offers clean shower booths and is also a typical capsule style hotel while Haneda has first cabin at terminal 1. In addition to the showers, it has a pretty decent sized onsen bath which is pretty dope for being at an airport. You guys down? Anyway, either of these capsule hotels are also worth
worth considering if you have an early morning return flight. I've actually done a video on the capsule hotel in Haneda. It's actually a luxury capsule hotel and it's pretty cool. So if you're flying in from Haneda, you might want to check that out. But they also have like dedicated shower rooms all throughout Narita. I'll leave a link in the description. There's actually several ways to get into the city. I've also discussed this in another video. It's a guide from Narita to Tokyo. Several different options. There's a taxi, which is just like super expensive. So no one ever takes that. So it leaves you with two other options. You can either take the train or the bus. Um, if you're going to a big hotel, then I recommend taking the bus um, because it'll actually like take you to the specific hotel but since I live in Shibuya and I'm going I go straight there it's actually easier for me to take the Narita Express straight into the Shibuya from here so it really depends on your location find out what the closest drop-off spot for the bus and for the train is and then I would plan my trip accordingly and use that transportation but the Narita Express as well as the buses they're roughly the same price if you take the limousine bus cheaper buses if you want they're a thousand yen you can take those but they only go to very very specific spots that might be really far from your hotel so it may not be worth taking that because it's just like so difficult to get to your hotel from there. Alright so now we're on our way to Tokyo. Another nice thing is to get a Suica card or a Pasmo card. Basically what these are are prepaid cards. A lot of people coming in Japan will get the JR Rail Pass but that actually doesn't work on the metro. You can buy an IC card at the ticketing machine at any train station. You can get one here at Narita Airport just in front of the JR Narita express entrance. You need a 500 yen deposit for the card and if you return it, you'll get it back. You can load the card up to 20,000 yen which is roughly $180. The IC card can be used on most train and subways all throughout Japan but also at convenience stores, kiosks, vending machines, some restaurants and even at major electronic stores. And don't worry, Suica and Pasmo work exactly the same even though they are issued by different companies. Now that you got some time to kill on the train before you reach Tokyo, might as well take advantage of your new mobile sim card. You can finally upload your new Instagram stories or if you're staying at an Airbnb, I suggest messaging the host to let them know you're on your way. If you have trouble finding their apartment, which happened to me before, you can call them since the mobile sim card comes with a real Japanese phone number, which even receives local calls and texts for free. Perfect for short term and long term visitors. And did I mention that it's super easy to order online with no complicated paperwork, no contracts, no activation fees, no termination fees, and no taxes. Plus, a majority of the profits go to charity. Travel the world and make it a better place too. As always, links are in the description of this video. Alright, so I hope you guys are now ready for Tokyo. Thanks again to Mobile for sponsoring this video. It really helps me out. If you guys like this video, help me out and hit that like button. If you guys want to check out what I'm doing on a daily basis, check out my Instagram account. And if you want to see more adventures in Tokyo or Japan, I release a video every Saturday morning and sometimes during the week. So hit that subscribe button and the bell button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.